In this video, we're going to use iClone's 3D Exchange to set up facial mapping for a UE4 character. This is going to allow the character to emote and show expressions after we're done. Now that we've characterized the body for this non-standard character, let's look at adding additional controls for the face. I'm going to click Convert to Non-Standard here, and this is going to allow us to see our joints. You can see the body is already characterized. Now we'll click the icon that has this face symbol in the upper right, and you'll see that you have extended mapping for the actual face. The areas that I want to cover are going to be the jaw and the eyes. If I select the jaw here on the right, you'll see on the left side of the screen that it's actually mapped to the correct joint. So let's click the Map to Jaw button here. So now we have the jaw map. If we look here, you can see that there's the jaw slot and the jaw joint is listed. Now the left eye and the right eye have no joints listed, so let's select them. I'm going to select the right eyeball and click the Map to Right Eye. Now I'm going to select the left eyeball and click Map to Left Eye. Now we have the jaw and both eyes properly mapped. If I hit convert right now, it'll store this, but let's look at our slots. You can see the left eye, right eye, and jaw all have joints assigned. So now I'll hit convert. On the right hand side of the interface, you're going to see a face setup section. Inside of that is the expression editor button, and we're going to click this. At the top of the expression editor, you're going to see several tabs. The first one is for the head. And if we click on any of these icons, you'll see the effect on the character. Now the next two tabs are the eye and the jaw. And these are two areas we're going to work on. But before we do this, let's change the material on the head so we can see things a little easier. Now I'm going to minimize the character menu here. And what we're looking for is the material menu on the right. Let me close another of these menus here to make some room. Now on the material menu, we're going to use the eyedropper tool and click on the eye. You're going to see the material show up. And I'm going to select the material for the head and just change the color. Now that we've set the head's diffuse color to white, we can go back to our expression editor. Notice that there's also the option here if you wish to, to add texture maps to this material, but for the sake of speed, we want to keep it untextured. So I'm going to close this material editor and go back to our expression editor. Now, when we open this up, you'll see that I'm on the eye tab and I want to check his eye movement. So here's rightward and you can see that it's actually just centered eyes at this point. Now we're actually going to want to turn on auto key, which is called auto apply if you hover over the button. Once you click this, any changes you make will actually be keyframed. So I'm moving the eyes to the right here. I'm going to move them down a little bit so they sit in the sockets a little better. And now this should be correct. Next, I'm going to adjust just the right eye by itself. Notice that that's what's highlighted in the panel. And I'm using the move tool to get a nice position for when the right eye is moving rightward by itself. As I check the left eye, I think that the left eye is fine where it's at. So now let's do the leftward view. So as I correct this left eye, you're going to notice that you can use the rotation tool as well. Now let's do the downward stance. I'm going to move it in position and rotate the eyes as needed. And we'll do the same for looking upward as well. Now, because we've added some rotational keys, you'll notice that in leftward and rightward, things are now offset slightly. So we need to go in and correct this. So I still have my rotational tool active. I'm going to go ahead in the interface and select the right eye and hit the clear button in the interface. Now, as soon as I do this, you'll see it pops back into its original position. Now I'm going to switch to the move tool and put this eye back where it belongs. Now that it's back in place, I'll add a little bit of rotation to it to the right. That should be fine. So you always want to check all your different views and make sure that rightward, leftward, downward, and up are correct. Now I've shown you the process of clearing keyframes and correcting it. Now it's up to you to do the leftward.
Now let's look at the jaw. Let's turn off the visibility for the bones here for the jaw because there's quite a few of them. And let's rotate this jaw into the down position for drop jaw. Once you're happy with it, we can move on to the next. For leftward, we're going to rotate left. And for rightward, we're going to rotate right. Now let's double check the head. We're going to select upward and rotate the head upward. And do downward and do the same thing. And then leftward and rightward. And then our tilts to the left and the right. Now that we've got our eyes and jaws working, Let's go ahead and set his head material back to the proper color. So I'm just going to use the eyedropper here. Use the eyedropper to click on the body, then select the paint bucket, and click on the head. The last thing we need to do is export this guy out as an iAvatar file for iClone. So we're going to go to File, Export. And you'll see here that we're set up for iClone 7 with the proper material sizes. So that's all there is to it. Now you have the ability to map the features of the face and use this in iClone and the Unreal Engine.